title of this sermon today is Are You Being Who You Are? Big question. This talk comes from a book by J. Douglas Bartrop. He's a renowned unity minister. He's written several books. This book that this came from is called A Practical Guide to Prosperous Living. We could all use that about now if you're being shut in, shut up, shut out. We're tired of it. If you're leading a life of quiet desperation, you may be trying to be something you're not. Reverend Bartol says it's never too late to have the courage to be true to yourself, your inner self, your soulmate, your true one inside. He tells a story about a woman that uh, wanted to spruce up the churchyard. Well, their church had this big, huge tree in the front of it, and just sat there, and she decided she wanted to plant flowers around it. So she decided to use red tulips. They were the best bulbs she could find. She nurtured them and planted them and took care of them. Finally, in the spring, they began to come up. Oh, they started to bloom, and they were beautiful. There was just a sea of red, beautiful tulips around this tree. Oh my, however strangely enough, there was one big yellow tulip right in the middle of all the red ones, right in the front of the church, of course. Well, this yellow one looked out of place out there in the middle of about 100 tulips. So she worried and worried about it, and she talked to everyone about it. And they considered taking it out. But then they began to realize that that yellow one was actually here to teach us something, something we could all learn. It was here making no excuses and no apologies for being what it was. It stood high and proud, lifted its blossoms up to the sunshine. See, this yellow tulip had decided to be the best yellow tulip it knew how to be. That's a great lesson that we can all learn from, even if we're in the sea of a bunch of red tulips. There's nothing in the makeup of this tulip with this very thing. It was not worth it had no struggle. We should be one thing when it was really something else. It didn't worry about it. It was a tool, so it was yellow. It was proud. It was sent by God. See, if you try to be something you're not, that can cause a lot of pain. We've all been there one time or another, I'm sure. Well, Reverend Bartrop refers to this as enticement of conformity. I believe that at some time in all our lives, we want to be, to some degree, trying to be something that we're not. As children, we just naturally express ourselves however we want to, even to the embarrassment of most of our parents. And it's great when you're kids, you don't care. <laughs> so we do quite well for a while. Then we decide, somewhere along the line, that this great need to be acceptable to our peers. So now, we've reached our young adult years. I must fit in. I really need to fit in to be accepted. However, this time, we really need to fit in this is when we feel the most vulnerable to all those around us, people, things, moving up the ladder, uh, those teenage years. Sad to say, but some of us never quite get out of the teenage years. We, I'm sure you've probably met people or know people I have in your life or family that they've got to keep up with everybody else, far be it from who they really are. So we continue on being as outstanding as we can, and we drive ourselves crazy trying to keep up with the Joneses or 
what we think is acceptable in society. Always putting public opinion ahead of who we are instead of finding out who we really are or how we really feel about ourselves. Henry David Thoreau concluded that the human mass leads lives of quiet desperation. And I guess he's probably pretty wrong. Reverend Markoff tells a story about how he felt he had to play football. You know, get in there, you've got to do it. Had to play football. So he joined up to play football because he wanted to fit in. Well, as he says, and I quote, that mine would work except for the fact that I was a gangly 120 pound weakling of complete uncoordination who could not even run and dribble basketball at the same time, let alone remember how to run football plays. So it's pretty hard for him, but he's still trying to fit in. He continued to try and try and try until one day he got knocked plain silly. And that knock on his head woke him up. He decided, was it really worth it to fit in and do all the things you didn't want to do just to fit in? Well, he tried to fit in that mold from grades 7 through 10. So with that, he hung up his shoulder pads and decided to work with being who he was, not who everybody else was or not having to fit in with the crowd. You see, that's an unnatural mask of personality. Our society doesn't really encourage individualism if you think about it. Each time we put on that uniform, or he put on his uniform, or whatever, you look at everybody else, and then finally he just threw in the towel and realized that the need to listen to his own heart and be himself was much more pleasant. You see, to be who you are and not give an in to the social ladder, which we all sometimes do. It's important that we learn to operate successfully on our own. For our path is our path of our own hearts. We need to learn that the path of dissatisfaction is a signal that we're not living our life to the fullest using all of our traits, using all of our personality and love of who we are. We don't live to our fullest potential when we just try to fit in. The only way that we can actually do this correctly is to live life from the inside out. Is that not what we're taught in unity? Go inside. Don't live from out your hand. That just makes unhappiness for a lot of people. Maybe you don't realize it for a while. But you see, each one of us is a product of a cosmic activity. It's creating its individualized expressions and quite natural to nature. When we live from the inside out, we live from our Christ consciousness. We awaken that God within. In order to be successful, you know, you need to be true to yourself. How can you be successful worrying about everybody else? The other guy's going to be successful, you're just going to sit over here and worry about it. God didn't want it that way. But we are human, and we have to go back and forth many times before we get it right. And as parents, we try to instill one fact in our children. And that's telling them the most important thing they can learn or will learn is to be yourself. You don't have to be Tom, Dick, or Harry, Sally, Sue, or Mary. Just be yourself. 
After all, you were created for success. God never created a failure. He created you, the individual, to live here on this earth and to create as no one else can create. So you tell your kids, if I don't teach you another thing, I want you to be true to yourself. Don't worry about the social climbing ladder. Of course, as we watch them struggle, and struggle, you know, and you, you tell them and you tell them, and you think, I'll never get this, but maybe. And we tell them over and over again. And how many times do we hear well, that's okay for you then, but things are different now. It's a lot harder to live out here now than it was when you were little or when you grew up. When actually it's all the same thing, just with different surroundings and settings. But in a way, I guess that is true. Things do change. And you still have to come to the realization that your deepest level of being is your true self. Because God did not design us for failure. He designed each one of us for success. To go out into this world and succeed in our very own way. In our very own path. So we have this little flame inside and that flame is our God self. And it flickers and flickers, and what it wants is to be let out, to, to glow, to show off to other people. Look who I am. I am a success of God. Let that flame rise. Shine through it. But always remember that we are all Because we're here to express God, are we not? Remember the story about the ugly duckling? That was a little swan, I guess his egg got mixed up, and he threw up in the middle of a bunch of ducks. And the ducks just thought he was horrible, he was so ugly and so different and such an outcast. He was totally confused. And then one day, he saw the swans, and he looked just like them. He was actually a beautiful swan. He wasn't up to that thing at all. See, the moral of that story is that you must be true to yourself. Don't try to be a duck if you're a swan. You look funny in the way. The important thing for us to remember is that this transformation that takes place this inner awakening within each and every one of us will naturally happen in due course. You know, you may ask yourself why. Well, it's because you're designed for success. Yourself, no one else. You're in divine order. Let that self shine. Shine to everyone you meet. Help each and every one understand they don't have to just fit in. The little girl crying in the corner because she didn't have the right earrings, the right skirt, the right something. Doesn't matter. She has herself. She has God within like each and every one of us. This is what's important to teach our children. They're designed strictly for success. I'm going to end today with a poem by Deborah Drummond. It's titled Recognition. I want to be noticed for who I am, not who I could be, would be, or even should be, but who I am at my 
on very cold. Pure love and potential. Seeking only to be understood 